Hey, what's going on today, guys? Today, I'm going to be installing liquid cooling modification to this RTX 2080 Ti card by Zotac. It's an AMP edition. So, as you saw in my, my most recent videos, I do have it in SLI. Uh, by the way, that means when you have two cards working at once uh, in my in my setup, as you can see in this clip here. And in this, obviously, the top card is getting it's getting limited air and very very inefficient cooling just be, just because of its placement. So I want to upgrade to to the liquid cooling I have right here. So I bought the Kraken uh, G12 bracket on Craigslist. Uh, as well, I got this um, 240 millimeter. It's just a cheap liquid cooler that I can use to attach to it. And I'll be I'll, basically in the video, I'll be removing this on uh, my 2080 Ti card. I'll be removing the the three fan cooler and installing the liquid cooler in, in this place. Uh, that will allow, that'll allow me to place the radiator far away from uh, to get fresh air for much needed cooling on this card. Uh, the other reason, so it's going to be running, of course, with the uh, other card in it. It's, it's an EVGA. The reason why I'm not doing the EVGA is because it's a somewhat decent air cooler in that one. I, I like to, I really want to get rid of this this cooler though, just because it. First of all, it's narrow, and that's I, I don't like that. And furthermore, another thing I don't like about it is that when this card is on idle, the fans don't they they, they can they remain spinning at I would believe to be is around 2,500 RPM. And it really, when a card's on idle, the fans should st stop spinning. But I guess that's not Zotac. I guess decided cheap. I'll not have that future. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video of uh, me installing liquid cling onto this card. All right. So step one is going to be removing the old cooler right here, the three fans. It's uh, pretty straightforward. It's going to be this, the four screws right here, one, two, three, four, as well as the one on the side, right there. So it, uh, it's going to be nice because I'm going to be able to keep the back plate on. The back plate, by the way, is held on by all these, I don't even know how many, I think there's about 12, all these screws right here. So all, all I'm really going to need for this first step, this first process is uh, just some alcohol wipes to, to get any of the old residue off for the old heat paste. And then uh, some paper towels and a fine Phillips head screwdriver. So yeah, let's get started. Pretty easy to take off. Now for the side screw. So now mechanically the oh the the cooler is completely disconnected. It it's only basically held on by friction of the old thermal paste right now. So I'm just gonna flip it on its forward like that. Let's try taking it off. Oh, it's still oh it's still being hold, held by something. I see the oh yeah the fan headers. It's gonna have to disconnect those. Oh, very interesting. I'm just going to go grab some pliers to get uh, these, these two fan headers off. All right, so I finally managed to get the the fan headers for the cooler off with the with these pliers right here. I'll show you. So there's a total of three headers on the on the cooler, by the way. There's one right here, and one one right here. There's two connected to that cable there, and then of course right here there's. I guess this is for the third fan right here. So yeah, and I'm gonna clean off uh, the old residue. First of all, I guess it'll be good to just clean off the little coolers, the old residue right there, I'll clean it off. So here's a fresh alcohol strip. Just 
swipe that down. Actually, first I'm just gonna push it with this. This is plastic material so it doesn't damage it. This is probably a really poor quality heat paste too since it's from the factory. I'm just, I'm just going to discard on this paper towel here. I'll wipe it down with the alcohol. I'm using alcohol because it evaporates instantly if you don't know. Just wipe that down with a fresh dry paper towel. There, so now my heatsink has a fresh copper pad for whenever I need to reinstall it. There's nice, nice and clean. Now for the chip itself. This is probably the most delicate piece, piece of uh, the entire video card. There's barely any residue on it. Wipe it down. Just gonna zoom in there, but you can see the the Nvidia logo. Everything is clean now. Give that a wipe. All right. So yeah, there's my clean chip. Part one is complete. The the cooler here has been removed. Now the following next clips is gonna be me installing the bracket for the GPU liquid cooler along with the pump itself. All right, so I just managed to get the the liquid cooler uh, heat sink connected here. So I put uh, three dabs on the GPU chipset underneath here. Hopefully that's enough. Anyway, so uh, I just have to tighten these screws now, and uh, this this liquid cooler here will be secured. Let's take a look. So now I'm going to connect this fan to the fan header on this in this motherboard. So we're on the on the GPU, I have an adapter. This is a type of fan header used on um, on GPUs typically. So it's gonna. This is the one that's used on motherboards. This is a, an adapter here. Just plug it in there, like that. Now this should plug in right here. I'll show you where I'm plugging. Just gonna connect it to that, oh, to that white, white one there. Yep, that should be on. And there's a cooler. All 
All right, so now let's install my system. All right, guys, so we got a slight problem here. What I did, I did manage to successfully install, as you can see, the little cooler is just off on the side here. Uh, however, when I want to uh, put on the the bridge, the bracket does get obstruction in the way. Um, I'll get back to you guys in a bit. So after trying to uh, get the MB link bridge to fit, I gave up, and as you can see there, I just made a gap on the uh, on the bracket right there. All right, guys. So yeah, here's the final product right here. After working for about two hours through those instructions, I finally managed to get get the rig all built. Uh, so yeah, I'll show up down beneath. Uh, here's here's the EV GA twenty eighty. I just have it right right there. And yeah, the one in the middle was the one I installed liquid cooler on. Initially, the Zotac is now uh, modded with the uh, liquid cooling attachment. I did a bit of, uh, as you saw in the last clip, there was a bit of grinding. I finally managed to, admit, uh, to fit this MV link bridge right here. And uh, yeah, um, just gonna my final my final touch to this will just be putting the fan on this radiator right here for the GPU. And yeah, here's here's a back view of it. Yeah, there's there's plenty of even for this uh, fan right here. There's plenty of breathing room And yeah, the, it's nice cuz uh, my objective was to get the Like initially There's just uh, warm air circulating in the system right there and now now up with the liquid cooler It's all the all the heat is gonna be pumped through these through these pipes up to this uh, up to the radiator up here so now it, all that energy, all that you know, heat will be dissipated up here. It should be nice. My CPU liquid cooler is right here, of course, but right here is a new 240 millimeter uh, GPU liquid cooler for the Zotac 20 ATI AMP edition. I just have a 112 millimeter fan attached right now. I think that's all I need. Anyway, it has a dual purpose. Uh, not only is it going to be cooling this right here, but it's also going to be uh, creating an air circulation throughout the whole system in general, since it's going to be uh, sucking the air from down beneath and then blowing it upwards. Of course, it's going to heat my room too, but I mean, it's winter time, so who cares? Yeah, so um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, I'm really, I'm really happy. I managed to get uh, two of the 20 ATI cards uh, connected with the NV Link bridge without compromising uh, the the heat efficiency for one of them. Anyway, so yeah, let's fire it up. It's kind of loud right now, but yeah, I'll do some tweaking and it should run okay, and nice and silent eventually. So let's play some games. All right, guys. So yeah, here's the game. Um, it's Battlefield 1. It's 4K max settings. I chose this game by the way because it utilizes SLI very well. Anyway, so yeah, it's for the next few minutes, it's, I'm going to be showing some footage. Uh, you can see the uh, with the graph, the GPU temperatures. Yeah, this will be really exciting because we're going to be getting uh, well over, uh, at most times, 100 frames per second. And this, by the way, uh, uh, as I said before, it's 4K absolute max settings. This is pretty godly, so we'll, we'll see. By the way, I really appreciate I made it this far in the video. Yeah, so uh, thanks again for watching and uh, uh, feel free to carry on if you want to. We have taken objective Duff. We have taken objective Edward. We've taken the objective. Hold on to it.
That's first aid for you. There's some first aid. First aid, get past up. Your wounds, I can fix them. We are losing objective Charlie. We have taken objective Charlie. There's some first aid. I'll deal with those wounds if you like. First aid. Halfway there, we have the upper. Who's that first aid? Take that first aid. We are losing objective. 